We talk. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to, to the celebrated <laughs> nightly news of Calaveras County. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate it. And, and uh, this is John. I'm John. <laughs> I'm Sarah. And there was a lot of stuff going on today. There was a lot going on today, besides the Board of Supervisors. Now, actually. to start with, I'm going to throw myself on the, the, the mercy of our audience. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> should I get out of the way? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I ask you, I guess, you know, you should feel sorry for me because I sat in a Calaveras County Board of Supervisors meeting for over five hours Five today. hours. Five, five hours. hours. It five. was a monumental five. meeting. And if you remember last night when we were talking about the board agenda, they, the way it was agendized, they should have gotten out of there at 10.30. Well, there was nothing on the agenda, except that this one item took three and a half hours. Exactly, yeah. but I mean, usually you would plan for that, right? Well, I think they kind of did, because there was nothing else on the agenda. <laughs> you know, if you're looking at the agenda and you want to see a couple items, that can either be a good thing or, or a really yes. bad thing. And I've today seen the board, it was... Yeah, it was a bad thing today. Well, not necessarily, if you like that sort of thing. But well, short agendas can even, I mean, they can mean a 30-minute meeting and you're they out. They can't. Yeah. Or they can mean a seven-hour meeting. And also, was a little promo for next week. Today <laughs> was the first day that we did live streaming of the Calaveras County Board of Supervisors meeting. Mm -hmm. all and five it is of it. audio. Uh, audio only, because mm -hmm. um, that's all we have the bandwidth to push from location there. Yes. So at some point in the future, we'll start pushing live video. Mm -hmm. But um, for now, it's, it was live audio. Live so, audio today. And then we'll have the actual Board of Supervisors Probably video tomorrow night. Probably tomorrow, tomorrow night, evening. because it was a five-hour meeting to mm -hmm. the time you convert it and do the other stuff. It will exactly. be And then in the while. future, video and audio live stream. Yes, in the future. Yes, in the yeah. future. Um, but on the video, it's it's going to be a, it'll be a while till we do live stream mm -hmm. video, just because of bandwidth issues um, at the county and that mm -hmm. type of stuff. So, so if you want to listen to it on your computer, if there's sort of a hot button issue like there was today, yes, you can just hear it yes. right there. You can hear hear all the commentary before they get to that issue because right. sometimes the supervisors talk about things before it comes up. Sometimes on the consent agenda there are issues that play into right. uh, the sort of hot button right. issue and uh, if you just happen to be at work and can listen to it on your computer, there and you And if it. you have a Windows mobile phone, mm -hmm. the Windows mobile phone, that is a streamable Windows media player file. So if okay. you have a data package on your phone, mm -hmm. you can be Cruising through, just listening, Anywhere. listening to the Fab Five on your phone. That's right. right? I like that. The Fab, the Fab Five. Five. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's the well, Fab what are the, Five? Yeah. You can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so it was the Fab Four today. Fab um, Four today. Marita. Yes. Marita was uh, actually. I guess she was uh, attending a. Uh, something. I guess exciting, she's on a committee hopefully. for jail overcrowding or something like that. Yes. In the state. Yes. She so is. that's what she uh, is. What she was on. I think it's. Instead of just talking about it, we probably tell them what actually went that's on during right, the meeting. That's right. And during the meeting today, the bulk of it was taken up on legal access issues. Mm -hmm. And what is, um, there was a certain parcel on a roller road, mm -hmm. the older roller road that in August of last year, where the person that was right on the road um, that the other people had to mm -hmm. drive through that property mm -hmm. wanted to get a uh, clarification from the county on what exactly access rights and things like that oh, that subsequent okay. parcels had. Mm -hmm. And that was the impetus oh, for, for this. this. Um, so now the county went back and looked at it and decided they need to come up with a, a good legal, uh, de uh, legal like access defi definition. definition. Now, initially, they had said that they wanted a basically a deeded legal access mm -hmm. to the parcel, but on some of these things, some of them the are county, so old. There's it, no way you can get it. Yeah, and this is something to where, and at the end of the meeting, this went on. There was most of the big real estate firms had representatives, mm -hmm. and sometimes multiple representatives there. Title companies had representatives, mm -hmm. and this was a. Oh, this has a the ability. I mean the potential to impact property values significantly. So for example, if they follow the strict um, the strict deeded legal access guidelines mm -hmm. that they currently were looking at, then some parcels would be deemed 
valueless because, because they would be landlocked you no and, and you them. would no longer be able to build on them. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically they were looking at, um, in essence, those properties would be condemned. Yeah. And there was, in, and I think that nobody foresee, nobody, that won't happen. You know, fiscally for the county and everything else, that's something that just won't happen. Well, they happen. need to take care of this quickly, right. right? But also I think that in all this back and forth, you know, everybody knows that that won't happen. It, it's, you know, everybody, because it just can't happen. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you can't go back and, because, I mean, because otherwise, uh, I can imagine if um, several well, several hundred the, parcel owners come back to the county and say, well, mm -hmm. I'd like a tax refund for the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's <laughs> right. It would, it, would, it would change the value of the properties. Right. But also... Some properties and parcels, their their titles and deeds are so convoluted that right. you cannot even really get to the deed holder sometimes. Well, I guess the balance is, is by state law, you cannot have a landlocked parcel. So that mm -hmm. even if there is not a deeded legal access or something like that, you mm -hmm. have to be allowed access Into the property. to your property. Absolutely. And it's the middle ground of negotiating is because I think a lot of the things is where there may be an access that is a grandfathered access, mm -hmm. but if it's deeded, then that means they would have to be a legally wide enough for fire and emergency yes. personnel and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, a lot, and that would cause a lot of landholders they don't want to do that. They don't well, want to grant that money. type of... Well, but also they don't want to grant that. To you. If you were own a piece well, of property, you wouldn't want to grant that It's a large foot swap wide. through your property. Correct. Quite frankly. And so I think what they need is... The, and on the, um, on the item today that we will actually scan and post up, mm -hmm. and this is the item that the uh, Community Development Department presented forward with some of these for there would be exemptions for grandfathering and older parcels. Mm -hmm. If the, you would be if you were on a non conforming parcel you would be allowed to upgrade and repair an existing building. Mm -hmm. Lots of exemptions like that. But I think that it was still it, so what they they actually at the end of the three and a half hours they pushed it back two weeks. Um, but but they want it taken but they care want of it two actually, weeks. Yeah, they actually want this to come back, and it may not be. And you know, if there is a public comment section, it will be a public comment section followed by an action item, not mm -hmm. just a study session. I think they. Um, well, this wasn't a study session today. No, it I know. It was a minute order. Right, but there is enough. <laughs> and we won't talk about. But that there is again. enough impetus behind this that I think the uh, the board of supervisors and everybody mm -hmm. else is they want a clear. A clear ruling on this and some clear, you know, because for example, on for real estate transactions, having things in limbo is worse mm -hmm. than having a having an, a, a clear path, exactly. So or a path that is not particularly beneficial, right? But at to least a you particular know. industry, but at least you know. Yeah, and, and and I don't think, and I probably won't be. Um, Quite as real estate friendly, so to speak, as the septic one. My, this is just my guess because um, they basically they pulled the board at the end, mm -hmm. and because there could be two things. There is a title. It's article. You're better at rattling off numbers than that, but it's something <laughs> seventeen of the yeah. yeah yeah. Basically, that one is the one where the county has to get into based on that ordinance of what is legal access requirements. Mm -hmm. Now one of the, um, some of the people that spoke today said they should just completely dump that. So where the county gets out of defining but, legal access and then leaves it up to the courts. But, and it is a civil matter. But it is, I mean, it's the Calaveras County Zoning Code that you're referring to, Title 17. Right. And but, they want more clarification for the easements. Correct. In that particular But there is an title. option. But there would be the the one option is if you completely removed that, then then it falls back on default state law, mm -hmm. which is fire and safety. You know, fire and safety accidents. It, it falls back on state law, and basically the county says, if you have an issue, go go fight it out in the courts, because then it dumps it into a civil issue. So, but then they pulled the board at the end, and then says do. Does anybody want to do that? And the the four supervisors that none of them did. So they all uniformly said well, no. You're, you're giving up your local control too. Right. At that so point. the point. So I guess the reason I brought it up is what will probably come out of this is somewhere, you know, splitting the baby, so to speak. You know, they're not going to have 
It's, We're in King Solomon's court now, right? Yes. <laughs> so it's probably, um, you know, obviously you're not going to have the, um, oh. Is Upshot it, of it is it'll be back in two weeks. It'll be back in two weeks. It'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. And if you want your, if, if you were going to have the uh, community development department material up on the site later on. Yes, yes. I will. So yeah, if in you fact, want you know to what? actually look it up. I will go, I'm going to go, I'm going to walk off camera here for just a second and I'm going to get it. Of course, you would do another piece. I'll, run, I'll grab, grab it right here. Well, I think this is the very first time I've ever seen somebody on the news actually walk off camera, unless they were pushed off camera. Um, and Dan, you're getting that. Didn't Dan rather do that? Didn't he jump off? I'm just joking. Well, he, he needed to. Let's put it that way. Anyway, I'll just go to the accident with the, the transit bus. <laughs> More government news. If you were actually stuck in traffic okay. between Angels Camp and Highway on Highway 49. There it is. See, I think... I think all right, we're back again we're back. onto this topic. We're yes. jumping around today. Well, not badly so, but I sh we're just hopping. didn't. I didn't bring my show notes. Okay. I left them in my briefcase. He left them in the briefcase. And so I think it'll probably end up somewhere between what is currently in effect now and what was proposed today by the community development department, and no regulation at all. Because it's okay. they have something. I'm just going to read this to you for a minute because I want I want to read the code to you. What seems to be at issue is this quote: Each use of land or structure shall have legal access, and I want you to remember that legal access that does not say legal deeded access. That says In legal access from the nearest public road. Such access shall be constructed to the standards of the Department of Public Works for the land use proposed. Now, you can read that as you may, and this will actually, all this information is going to be up on the site. Yeah. You can, if you have complaints or you have questions, I suggest you contact the county. But this actually was not voted on. I know today. it wasn't voted on. They, right. they continued it for two weeks. Right. And it will come back in two weeks, and we'll find out exactly what they say legal access is. Which needs to be defined, yes. Which needs to be defined. Right. I used to sit in the Board of Supervisors room every single now Monday. Now she makes me go. Now he And goes. that is just... And yeah. then I see the corollary information and go, excuse me, this seems to be quite well defined. It says legal access, legal access. <laughs> but All then... Right. What is that? But anyway, I guess... Exactly. What is that? Yeah. Um, that's the only thing we'll bring on today is um, it's an important fiscal item. We could get a big item. argument, No. It's actually. an important fiscal item for the county. Oh, it and is. And there's a lot of people... Depending that, on how you define legal access, you will either devalue quite a bit of property in the county... Right. And I guess one of the things even gonna do is if or. you're watching this from the Bay Area, you're going, mm -hmm. man, I mean... Yeah, this, this is kind this of would, yeah. It this wouldn't is, apply because no, this is, no. We're ever, going to the accident with the bus now. Okay, we're can done. I go Thirty seconds, <laughs> please, please. Okay, all right. This applies more to up here because we're a rural county, and there was uh, people testifying today. For example, they have parcel maps that has a road that is shown on, yes, the, map on the map that doesn't that exist. Doesn't exist. It's never existed. Mm -hmm. So I think in a rural county, you end up with really interesting things, you know, that were have been grandfathered in since the 1860s. Yes, that, um, yes. And that's why I, said, I mentioned earlier the convoluted titles and deeds and who belongs to what and what belongs to who and when the properties get passed down beyond, beyond, and beyond to the different generations. Sure. And So it is a, a matter of how they define that legal access in two weeks. And we will come back in two weeks. And, um, and I will actually try and get to topic. that meeting. I will try and get to that Ooh. meeting. Okay. Accident. Accident time. <laughs> um, this this actually turned out to be a good story. A <laughs> good news well, story. Well, <laughs> I guess it's one of those things that could have been much worse. It could story. have been worse. Yeah. Exactly. Um, approximately you now. About 337. Nah, probably 315 or so. 315? Yeah, I mean, it, the accident that today, the official report has yes, not been done it yet. Hasn't so been. some of these facts, or some of what we're saying here may... 337 is when we got it we up posted, on the site. Yes, which may change a little bit as time mm -hmm. goes on. Um, but 
the basic facts are that on Highway 49 between San Andreas and Angels Camp, about a mile north of Angels Camp, there was an accident today involving mm -hmm. um, three vehicles plus yes. a county transit county bus. Transit bus. Mm -hmm. And the bus was northbound on its way to San, um, San Andreas, and there was a car that stopped to make a left-hand turn. Yes. And the transit bus could not stop in time, and at the last minute, swerved to the left, clipped the car, you know, mm -hmm. the car back in line, but then unfortunately went head on into an SUV going yes. southbound. Mm -hmm. And we have pictures up on the site where mm -hmm. um, the damage to the vehicles was pretty significant, mm -hmm. uh, pretty significant damage, but minor injuries. Uh, minor injuries, everybody's going to, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's going to be some really sore people. Yeah. Um, and, but there was six or seven people um, from Actually, what we heard on, on, the bus. on the bus. We heard from reports of that, uh, plus the occupants of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. But what it really did is just made a mess of, of traffic, traffic for this it, afternoon. Anytime you get an accident like that on a two-lane highway, it yeah. just, it, it backs everything up. Just before rush hour, the mm -hmm. only you know, the main thoroughfare, but yes. and it was, yeah. um, and I it would was, it, it was, was a mess. A mess. Um, in fact, both of us got stuck in it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, both of us got <laughs> stuck in it. Um, but we actually will post a little clip. We took a clip of how long the backup was, so well mm -hmm. over a mile, mm -hmm. well over a yes, mile long absolutely. on the backup. Um, absolutely. So I guess the good news is, is everybody's apparently going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Bad news is a lot of wrecked vehicles, and, right. um, you know, the... And one county bus, you know, they just got approved for three new buses. Yes. They're going to need four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Um, <laughs> well, you know, at least uh, people were minimally hurt. That is uh, you know, a really important You know, thing. If, if somebody, those are the initial reports. And if somebody was mm -hmm. more seriously hurt um, mm -hmm. on them, we're not trying to minimize we're not trying to minimize it at all. But yeah. um, this is just from initial reports on the scene. Um, so that was a, mm -hmm. a very spectacular crash that had a, a it, it, not a good outcome, but it could have been much, it much worse. Could have been much worse, exactly. Kind of like the plane yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like flipping the power line, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> very similar. Very, very similar. And uh, you went down to Angels Camp. We did. Today. We stopped by the. Um, the city council meeting tonight mm -hmm. where they had the um, the appeal of a decision for priority realtors to be able to mm -hmm. move into Greenhorn Creek. Oh. And there was a lot of people in the Greenhorn Creek subdivision that mm -hmm. do not want the retail office in, in their, in their in subdivision. subdivision. Yeah. Okay. So, so we don't have the outcome on that, but they were talking about that when you left. Right. And we'll okay. post something on it this morning. But it was mm -hmm. pretty well attended. And mm -hmm. also, it's, it's an interesting thing listening to... Um, um, Small town news. It's very. It's um, even smaller. It's interesting. Even more interesting than county news. There was mm -hmm. uh, a lady there complaining about her um, trash bill or waste bill. Yeah. And she was in a, um, and it was twelve dollars, mm -hmm. and she was there wondering why it was showing up, and it, it had to be. It was actually from a. It was actually. Because she lived in a um, in a controlled park, like a mobile home park or something oh, like that, okay. and it was actually okay. from them and not from mm -hmm. the city. So, okay, so there was a case of mistaken. Of mm -hmm. The waste was mistaken where that bill came from as well. And she wanted her twelve dollars. Okay. And anyway, any uh, Angels Camp, other Angels Camp, because we usually don't talk about Angels Camp very much. Not as much. much as we should. But, but they um, they actually received a thirty five thousand dollar community block development grant. To help brand the city, and wasn't it they, already branded with, with frogs? Yes, yes. That's but maybe what, that's that's what gonna, I would think. Maybe they're going to enhance and burnish the frogs. Possibly. Apparently, they're going to hire a consultant to come in and help them to get the word out about you Angels know, Camp. You know, maybe put some of the consulting dollars to the pine tree. Here, let's let's go back and forth. Let's see. I will go. Let's consult. do Angels Camp. Hop on in. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Angels Camp. What's another one? <laughs> the roughest, rowdiest city in the motherload. Okay. It used All to right. be. There we go. You could talk about um, the uh, brawls in the street. Maybe they don't want to brand it stick quite on that. that way. I was yeah. trying to stick on that the frog, frog thing. The frog what thing. is the official slogan? Of Angels Camp? Yeah. 
I don't think they have one. It's not the biggest little city in the world because somebody that's else. That's Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. We yeah. Um, um, yeah. My my computer's being attacked. Here. Hop on in. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next story. <laughs> don't feed the frog buckshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and also, a um, couple of upcoming things on the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. On this Friday will be Assemblyman Tom Berryhill. Very will cool. Will be addressing the luncheon. Mm -hmm. And also, a couple days ago, this is one of those things where we just posted a, uh, I get the full story posted on it, on a Murphy's, a nine-year-old Murphy's boy that got mm -hmm. bit by a rattlesnake. And it yeah. looks like he's going to be fine. Uh, circulation to do his arm. But it was, um, be careful out there for snakes. So if you're coming up uh, coming up here and you want to, there are a few rattlesnake incidents out. Um, this is a terrible year for rattlers, yeah. quite frankly. Because yeah. it is dry and um, it is really hot early in the season. And they just love that. Yeah. They really do. And it's, um, you know, also on Board of Supervisor stuff, there was other issues. Um, the sheriff's, uh, Sheriff Dennis Downham came in there, mm -hmm. and he had to, um, he addressed the well, board we and really passed something. Well, we really are popping around. What do you mean? <laughs> I was just, a couple things I was thinking that we didn't get to. <laughs> okay, okay. Actually, Sheriff Dennis Downham came in. Yes. And was talking about a uh, tri county agreement. A tri county more agreement, beds. agreement to well, holding beds, right? Holding beds, yeah. Because they actually contract out to like San Joaquin and Stanislaus. Like, yeah, it was going to be now. San Joaquin, Amador, and uh, Calaveras. Oh, and they're, they're gonna, oh, doing are they going to try to partner with a, Amador? I think so. Developing oh. a uh, developing a facility that would be somewhere between a full jail and halfway house. It's mm -hmm. kind of uh, you know, kind of in between. All right, a couple of little things we want to put, we want to try is you know one thing on these little sports. We don't talk trap shooting enough here on the nightly news, do we? Do we talk Can you trap tell shooting? He's irritated. Who? Can you tell he's irritated? No. No. Can we talk? We don't talk trap shooting much, do we? Yeah, he's wishing he had a gun right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Let's practice trap shooting in the studio. The Angels trap shooting team shot their way to the Nationals. I think that is Isn't a very that cool, cool story. This is a very cool story. I tell you what, that takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice yeah. to do that. And I think and it's a very it well. cool story. Um, the uh, SCTP Team Angels Camp trap shooting team shot the way to the Nationals trap shooting. And uh, championship finals to be held August 6th and 7th in Sparta, Illinois. Oh, wow. So they're going to Sparta, Illinois. The, um, and in the picture that you can see on the site, there is Valley Spring shooters Spencer Cummings and Scott Rader, Angels mm -hmm. Camp shooters Cody Chu and John Winnings, and Arnold mm -hmm. shooter Travis Glass came in third in the Junior Varsity Division of the State Scholastic Clay Target Program Competition. Wow. Held this past Saturday in Kingsburg, California. Wow. So... Travis Glass ended up in a tie for second place in the individual competition after shoot-off placed third out of 143 shooters in the JV decision. Mm -hmm. JV decision. Division. Division. Yeah. Division. So very, very cool. There was, um, we have archers in the county that go to nationals quite frequently as well. Young archers. Young archers? Mm-hmm. I can't remember their names right now. It wasn't. Re it was in the last six months, actually. So. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Also, should we touch a little bit on national news? Sure. You know, I'm going to save my uh, state news for tomorrow. You are? Yes. Okay. Because you know that so you have to all of you tune in, because we know that with Katie Couric's ratings dropping precipitously, more and more people are tuning into the Pine Tree for That's their nightly right. news, right? That's right. They yes. certainly are. <laughs> yes. Yes. And Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg is the big, exits the, the GOP. Big. Where mm -hmm. we're going, he's not quite. We're not quite sure yet, but we know where he's left. Yes, but he was apparently a Dem before he became a Republican to get elected as mayor. So the odds are that he's going back to the Dems. No, he's uh, isn't he an independent? Didn't he go to become independent? Well, I don't know. Well, let's see. Well, okay. anyway, also on that, 
is uh, Fred Thompson now is all uh -huh. tied up, is now at the top of the Republican polls and he's not even officially in. Very nice. Now, does that a an indictment of the people who are already in? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, all I know is that they need, uh, much like the Democrats, they need to pick the correct candidate. Yeah. Um, who is who is a has appeal for a large. Audience. Yeah, and also on the sad note, if you've probably no doubt seen this, there were nine firefighters killed yes. fighting a fire in, mm -hmm. in a South Carolina warehouse fire. Mm -hmm. um, and that's... Uh, hmm. He has to be killed in the line of duty like that. Is, yeah, um, and if you're looking at climate news... Climate, more climate news. Climate huh? news, if you're looking, if you're following the global warming issue, China now overtakes the U.S. as the world's biggest CO2 Hunger. emitter. So, See, I was having this discussion with someone, though, and this could prove my complete ignorance sure. of the eco ecological cycle. Um, don't plants use CO2 to convert uh, into energy and oxygen? Then they give up oxygen as a com part of the conversion process that we then use. Yeah, but there's something about that process. I don't know. You know, it's just wasn't there such a thing as uh, something's carbon neutral? Not, I don't you know. know. Well, I know the more plants well, are good, right? Well, you know, right? the other, the other, the other night, I thought that there was a cow at White Pines, and John quickly, <laughs> <laughs> quickly told me it was a frog. <laughs> so, uh, as you can tell, I am not a naturalist. All right, Bloomberg exited. Um, I have no plan, but he, you know, everybody thinks he's angling for a presidential <laughs> a run. presidential run. And he may so, be. I have no plans to announce a candidacy because I plan to be mayor for the next 926 days. But his arms were clearly crossed, and maybe even his fingers, too. So, that's one hmm. thing we'll have to watch. Um, well, it may be like um, Perot, where they, th he took part of the election. Great. You know, so you're splitting the vote. Yeah. And you never know quite I mean when you bring somebody in who can split actually split the vote, then it's all up for grabs, quite frankly. You know, and if you ever think that your local government I may not know anything about I know. <laughs> environmental cycles, I know. but I do know about politics. Yes you do. She is our policy wonk. <laughs> and one interesting thing is that in a little bit of the humorous and oddball news is mm -hmm. um, if you ever think your county government is a little bit suspect or not happy with your mm -hmm. local government, okay. Oh, yes, the state look treasurer, at well, the state treasurer in South Carolina has been suspended after being indicted for dis for distribution of cocaine. Oh, the state treasurer. Yes. And was he? He was trying to balance the budget. <laughs> was he selling it? That's what he was indicted for. Was he for. selling it out of the uh, the evidence closet? I don't know, but that's what he was indicted for. And also, the Home Depot fires a man for stopping shoplifters. How did that happen? Well, let me tell you. In Jacksonville, Florida, Bobby Hagan never thought he'd be walking down the road on he's been since he laid out from two Fridays in the Home Depot store in Lim, uh, on Lim Turner. Okay. A six-year employee with Home Depot got fired last Friday for confronting shoplifting suspects in the parking lot and grabbing the alleged stolen goods back from them. Per police arrested and charged the man oh, and the woman with grand, grand, grand theft. theft. Okay. But since he... Um, because he grabbed the bags, he was part of it. Is no, I don't think so. Oh. No. Home Depot said its policy is clear and offered up a statement. Policy calls for any associate who witnesses criminal activity to immediately contact a designated loss prevention associate or a security guard to the store who is professionally trained to handle the situation in the safest way possible. You know your company's getting too big when their statement says, if you witness criminal activity, immediately contact, contact the designated loss prevention associate. Ouch. Oh, ouch. You know, I'm quite glad that I'm saving my state news for tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Let's just go to weather. How about we go to weather? Can I do one more? Yeah. All right. And here's this other one. Is 
A 24-year-old who grabbed the gun before going to help his neighbor who had been shot. You're fired, here's a man after saving a woman's life. When a neighbor screamed she'd been shot, Colin Burley grabbed his shotgun and found a victim who began treating her uh, bloodied right leg. Uh, Tonetta Lee survived Tuesday pre-dawn shooting at her Jacksonville apartment, and her sister and neighbor praised Bruley's actions, but her employers, the same people who own the Arlington complex where Bruley lives, reacted differently. They fired him. Mm-hmm. A leasing agent, the Oak Mill, uh, lost a job and told that brandishing the weapon as a, was a workplace violation and was failing to notify supervisors after the incident occurred. He worked on... There you go. So this is kind of like Home Depot. Yes. So be careful if you do the right thing out there. Well, Sarah, what do you got? Weather. Weather? Weather. Oh. We've got weather. All right, let's do weather. Okay. Arnold weather. Arnold, okay. Okay, Arnold weather. Tonight, low of 61 degrees. Tuesday, 86 degrees. Wednesday, 87 degrees. And... Thursday, 88 degrees. Murphy's. Murphy's is low of 59, high of 86, Thursday high of 89, Friday high of 89. Okay. Angel's Camp. Let me scroll down there. Tonight, low of 64. Tuesday, 90 degrees. Wednesday, 87 degrees. And Thursday, 88 degrees. Are you going to do Bear Valley? I will do Bear Valley. Okay. Bear Valley. And low of 51, high of 77, high of 81 on Thursday, and high of 80 on Friday. Very nice. Actually, that very would nice. be very yeah. nice this weekend. Definitely. Very nice. Okay, then. Well, Well, we would really like to thank you for stopping by. What? To our ping pong news today. Ping pong news. Was ping I bouncing news. around? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we've been running. I've been running ragged been since running like 8 a.m. this yeah. morning. Just go, 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 go. So it's hard to get out of that, that mode. That Actually, because I was going from event to traffic accident yeah, to both, event. Actually, to, we both have been sort of bouncing around today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, ping pong news. Ping pong news. Yeah, not bad. Yes. Not bad. So tomorrow I will talk about all the state stuff. Senate bills. Are you going to give us a tease? Bills. Um, we are going to talk about radio frequency ID tags. Ah. RFID. You know those little chips ah. they put in to track people. So are you going to put one on your children? No. <laughs> but apparently some employers want to actually insert them in their employee's skin. Uh-huh. It's like George Orwell. So they know where they again. are, right? So they, they don't have to bother with you know the scan cards and that type of thing. So. Uh, yes. Yeah, so our yeah. state legislature is going to take is looking to take steps to protect us as usual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. But that's just one one thing. So anyhow, you have to join us tomorrow night to see what I'm going to talk about as far as the um, RFID, RFID tags. tags. Sure. And also, I bet you there's some exciting things going to happen tomorrow too. So I love that come. commercial from the bank. Remember that one commercial from the bank where they stick the, where they staple the barcode to the no, guy's forehead? I've oh, seen that is that so one. funny. Basically, they staple a, bar, a barcode to this guy's forehead. <laughs> you have to remember this. And they're scanning his head, but it doesn't read. So she's like wiping his head across the bar scanner, and it, it doesn't beep, right? It's like the grocery store. You couldn't. Yeah, you can't. You couldn't scan can't it. it. He didn't beep. So. Anyway, scan. Uh, so tune in tomorrow for RFID tag news. Woo! Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you. We appreciate it, and you have a great evening. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. <laughs>